Recent attacks on Muslims show that anti-Muslim bigotry and even anti-Muslim violence are on the rise, primarily due to the politically incorrect rants of one self-promoting egomaniac, Muhammad. For nearly 14 centuries, Muslims have been slaughtering their fellow Muslims. Of course, Western politicians and reporters regularly assure us that Muslims who kill other Muslims aren't real Muslims because Islam prohibits Muslims from killing other Muslims. But these clueless, spineless politicians and reporters are forgetting one thing. Muhammad. According to Muhammad, there are three situations where Muslims can kill someone who has become a Muslim. In Sahih Muslim 4377, Muhammad says, It is not permissible to shed the blood of a Muslim man who testifies that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah, except in three cases one who leaves Islam abandoning the Jama'ah, the congregation of Muslims, a married or previously married adulterer, and a life for a life. So Muslims can kill a Muslim who leaves Islam, they can kill a Muslim who commits adultery, and they can kill a Muslim who has unlawfully killed another Muslim, life for life. Muhammad specifically commands Muslims to kill apostates. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6922, he says, Whoever changed his Islamic religion, kill him. Muslims who kill apostates are promised a reward in heaven. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6930, Muhammad declares, During the last days there will appear some young foolish people who will say the best words, but their faith will not go beyond their throats, i.e. they will have no faith, and will go out from, i.e. leave, their religion as an arrow goes out of the game. So wherever you find them, kill them. For whoever kills them shall have reward on the day of resurrection. Notice what Muhammad says here. We tend to think of apostasy as officially renouncing one's religion, but Muhammad commands his followers to kill people who are saying the right words, but whose faith doesn't go beyond their throats. So these aren't people who renounce Islam. These are people who claim to be Muslims, but don't have any real faith. Muhammad orders his followers to kill them. What's no less disturbing is that the Quran repeatedly tells Muslims that they're not real Muslims if they disobey certain commands that all of our Muslim friends disobey on a regular basis. For instance, in Surah 5, verse 51, Allah commands, O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as awliya, friends, protectors, helpers. They are but awliya, friends, protectors, helpers, of each other. And if any amongst you takes them as awliya, then surely he is one of them. Don't take Jews and Christians as friends. If you do, you're not a Muslim. You're a Jew or a Christian. Keep in mind, the prophet who's revealing this verse, telling his followers that they're not real Muslims if they have Jewish or Christian friends, is the same prophet who commands his followers to kill Muslims who aren't real Muslims. But the Quran goes even further. Surah 4, verse 65. But know, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them, and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. You have no real Islamic faith until you have no resistance against Muhammad's decisions, and you submit fully to those decisions. I've never met a Muslim who has no resistance against Muhammad's decisions. Every time I quote a command of Muhammad to a Muslim, I hear, well, that's not really what Muhammad meant. He meant whatever I happen to like. These passages warning that you're not a real Muslim if you do X, Y, or Z make it very easy for one Muslim group to say about another Muslim group, they're not real Muslims because they're ignoring this or that decision of Muhammad. We have to kill them and we'll get rewarded in paradise for killing them. But it doesn't have to be Muslims from another group. It can be Muslims from your own household. In Sunan Ibn Majah 2540, Muhammad commands, Carry out the legal punishments on relatives and strangers, and do not let the fear of blame stop you from carrying out the command of Allah. Carry out the legal punishments on relatives, and don't let the fear of blame stop you. What's the legal punishment for apostasy? Death. What shows that you're an apostate? All kinds of things. Having a Jewish or Christian friend, not submitting fully to Muhammad's decisions. And yet, when a Muslim teenager gets killed by her own family for becoming too westernized, we're told that it has nothing to do with Islam. 
It has nothing to do with Muhammad commanding his followers to carry out Allah's penalties on their own family members, nothing to do with Muhammad ordering his followers to kill apostates, and nothing to do with Muhammad giving us a list of different ways the teenage girl qualifies as an apostate. Muhammad's teachings are a recipe for bloodshed and death, and we see the results not only in the daily Islamic violence towards non-Muslims, but also in the daily Islamic violence towards Muslims. The greatest threat to Muslims in history is their own prophet. So if you want to protect Muslims from violence, the best thing you can do is learn some facts about Muhammad and expose him.